map. Uh, we're going to uh, derive the kinematic equations, the uh, four equations, the only ones that uh, keep their number the entire year, the first equation, the second equation, the third equation, and the fourth equation. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to derive the, the basic uh, kinematic equation, which is actually the third equation, using a velocity versus time graph. Okay, so velocity and time. And we're, uh, we're going to derive the equations for uniform acceleration, uh, which means that our uh, slope of our velocity uh, is going to be uh, constant. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to draw a, a velocity that's increasing at a constant rate or uniform acceleration. I'm going to label some points here. Uh, the y-intercept on this graph tells us what our initial velocity is. And I'm going to draw a little dotted line across here to indicate that the initial velocity uh, all the way across. And this point at the very top there, um, how would I calculate what that point was if I was using um, the equation of a line. What is the equation of the line for this particular line? Well, the typical equation of line or that we use is y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, our y value is velocity. The slope of the velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. The x value is time and the y-intercept is the initial velocity. Now I'm going to rewrite this in uh, the form that we use for physics which is just rearranged and this actually is the second equation right there. That's the second equation. Okay, so this point right up here is V equals V0 plus AT. Okay, so now we're just going to, to find the position. We use the area under the curve, and I need to add these two areas together. I need to add this rectangular area to the triangular area. So that doesn't sound too hard, so let's go ahead and and do that. So delta x is equal to the area of the rectangle. And the area of the rectangle is base times height, which is the base is in time, and the height is v0, representing the initial velocity. Okay, nothing too tough there. Now the rectangle, or I'm sorry, the triangle. Well, a triangle is one half, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Okay, so one half, and our base is time, and our height. Well, our height is the value at this point minus the value right there. So the height is actually v0 plus at, that's the equation of our line, that gives us the point here, minus this initial height of v0, and that just simplifies down to a times t. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in, a times t, and I'm going to uh, collect terms here, and that gives us one half acceleration times t squared. Now I'm going to put it all together. The first term v0t plus the second term 1 half the acceleration times the time squared. And I'm going to rearrange this a little bit more. I'm going to expand delta t out. That's final position minus initial position. And that's equal to 
our equation. And now I'm going to move the x0 to the other side of the equation, add it to both sides. And this will give us our third equation, our mean kinematics equation in standard form. And there we go. That's one way of uh, deriving that equation. It's, uh, I think, the most straightforward. It comes right from the graphical analysis that we've been doing. And uh, let's move on and see if we can come up with uh, the other equations. OK, so here's a list of the equations. Uh, they're the kinematics equations. This equation is number one. There's number two, number three, and number four. If I call an equation and say use the first equation, I mean to use this equation right there. Now, this is assuming this V0, this is assuming that we are at constant V, constant velocity. If we didn't have constant velocity, this term actually becomes the average velocity, which is equal to the final velocity plus the initial velocity over 2. And that's how it's written on our poster in the classroom. Okay, so uh, let's see where these come from. Uh, in particular, uh, the third and fourth equation. Uh, drive those using just the first two equations, which are really from the definitions of velocity and acceleration. So we can go back to our first principles of the definition of velocity and acceleration. Okay, so we're going to show how to drive the third kinematic equation from the second. And what we have is we have our first equation that was x is equal to the average velocity times time. And if you remember, the average velocity is v0 plus v over 2. And we're also going to use the second equation. I guess I probably should have said derive the third equation from the first two. Now, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to substitute this um, into here. I'm going to then substitute that into this equation, into the second equation. Okay, so first off, we end up with x is equal to v0 plus v over 2. And that's going to be times t. And I'm going to substitute this value for v into this equation. So with that substitution, we have v0 plus v0 plus a t over 2 times t, OK, times that t. OK, so now it's just a matter of doing some algebra, and after a little algebra, you'll see that we have x is equal to 2v0 over 2, which is v0 plus 1 half at times t. And then distributing the t, we end up with x, or more properly, delta x is equal to v0t 
plus one half a t squared. And that's our third equation. And we got that from our first two equations, which are uh, based upon the definitions of velocity and acceleration. Now let's see, we're going to find the fourth equation next. Um, and all of our equations depend upon time so far. Time appears in all of them. So what, what happens if we don't know time? We're going to have to uh, come up with an equation that we can use when we don't know what the time interval is. Okay, so again, we're going to start out with our first two equations. And we're going to go from there. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we'll start out with substituting average velocity into the first equation. Times t. And then what I'm going to do is from the second equation, I'm going to solve this for t and then substitute it in there. So for equation number two, to solve that for t, um, I'm going to subtract v0 from both sides. That equals a times t. And then I'm going to divide both sides by acceleration. And I will substitute that value in right there. So I end up with v0 plus v over 2 times v minus v0 over a. And that's equal to our change in position. Sometimes I get a little bit careless in not putting the change in there, but this is change of position. And after we foil this. Yes, we have to foil this. So uh, what we have is we multiply the top and we end up with, let's see, this is v0 squared and it's negative plus a v times a minus v0 plus a v0 times a v, which comes out to zero. And then we have a v times a v, that's plus v squared over two times the acceleration. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit, put it in a little bit better order, and we end up with, I'm sorry, that's not v2, that's v squared and 2a. So it looks a little bit better if we write it like this. Again, v0 is the initial velocity. This is over 2 times the acceleration. Now I just need to rearrange it so it's in a, uh, a little bit more useful form. So we have delta x is equal to final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared over 2 times the acceleration going to multiply both sides by uh, 2 times the acceleration and I have 2 times the acceleration times the change in position is equal to v squared minus v0 squared and standard form I'm going to add v0 squared to both sides leaving us with our fourth equation in the standard form we see it 2 times the acceleration times the change in position. Or sometimes you'll see it written like this with the change of position expanded. Okay, so I've uh, showed you all of the, uh, the four equations that we use. 
Uh, you can find uh, any of the variables, any of the six kinematics variables using these uh, these equations, and I'll uh, give you a another video on how to actually use these for uh, problem solving. So you're off the hook. You don't have to uh, answer any questions for this. Uh, just have a have a good day, and we'll see you in class.